make the size and we want to show in this exercise that the first of all the sequence x sub n which is minus one to the power n multiplied by n is an unbounded sequence and also we have the second statement of this exercise that x sub n which is given by n square minus n is also an unbounded so as for the first statement of this exercise so first of all you to the definition i want to consider the absolute value of my nth term of my sequence x sub n so it will be the absolute value of minus one to the power n multiplied by n is n I, I i hope that it is clear because you have to know what is the absolute value of, for example a negative a negative uh, number uh, the absolute value of minus one is the absolute value of minus one i'm waiting for your answer On ya. On ya. Do you know what this the absolute value of minus one? One. One. Yes. So if I take if I take the absolute value of minus one to the power one to the power n, excuse me. Uh, it will be either minus one or plus one. So the absolute value of this product will be n. You see? I, I hope it's clear. Is it clear? Is it clear? Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's clear. It's clear. So now, so now, you see, as in this definition, I've changed the notation, but it is, uh, it is not so important. So if I take any positive constant, any positive constant, capital C, okay? Then, then, if I take the number N, which is strictly greater than this constant, capital C, I will have that the absolute value of the member of my sequence x sub n which is n will be greater than capital c then due to this definition of the unbounded sequence my sequence x sub n minus one to the power n multiplied by n is unbound even if you see you have positive and negative negative members of your sequence but the absolute value will be greater than 
capital C, and this means that the sequence is unbounded. Is it clear? Yes, clear. Yes, clear. Good. So now, as for the second statement of this exercise, let's turn the page. It's, it is uh, the page number 21. So first of all, you see the idea, my idea, if you want, in general, roughly speaking, I want to reduce, I want to reduce in some way my initial sequence, my initial statement, that is statement number two, uh, to the statement number one. So in this case, first of all, we claim, we claim that n square is greater than square root of two multiplied by n. I hope that you can see that this inequality is equivalent to the inequality n is strictly greater than square root of two. Is it clear? Yeah, it's clear. It's clear. And this this inequality holds holds for any n greater than or or equals two. So if n is one, this inequality is not valid. But n is two, three, four, and so on. This inequality is valid. You see? Mm -hmm. Then, what do we have? We have that n square minus n is greater than square root of 2 minus 1 multiplied by n. Clear, I hope. Yes, it's clear. Clear. So, first of all, you have to remark that the square root of 2, if you take your calculators, Square root of two is strictly greater than one. Yes. One point three something. So oh, we have that n square minus n is greater than some constant multiplied by n. Then we can argue as in the previous as in the previous case you see you have you have something multiplied by n so you can find you can find a constant such that your term member of the sequence x sub n n square minus n will be greater than this constant. For any, for any constant, we can find such n that have that the absolute value of x sub n greater than this constant. Is it clear or not? Or oh, I have to repeat something in this proof.
Uh, for me, everything is clear. The girls and the guys. Is it clear? Yeah, I think it's clear. Clear. Clearly. Yeah. So, no problem. You see, the only thing here is this inequality that n square is greater than square root of 2 multiplied by n. Only, only this inequality may be, uh, may be a question for you, but I hope that this, this inequality is clear because you see, if you want, if you want, if I take, for example, for example, this inequality in the form n square is greater than square root of three, I will obtain the same thing, maybe beginning from n equals three, but in fact, the square root of three is 1.7 something will be the same thing you see here the constant in the first inequality is not very important is not very important we can choose any any square root sum and then we will say that our inequality is very beginning from uh, n equals three or four, it is not very important. But you have to know that the first term of this, the sequence, are not very important for the behavior of the sequence for large n. See, if n finite so it is not important we want to know something about the behavior of our sequence for large n you see and in this case using this simple inequality we obtain that our sequence unbound okay is it clear Yes, it's, it's clear. It's clear. Now, now we turn our page and we see another definition. Another definition, we want to define infinitely large sequence. So, uh, these sequences are also called infinitude the infinity so attention please because here here it's a good question for your examination you see we say that our sequence x sub n is called infinitude if for every m every positive constant m we can find such number which depends on this constant m so for different for different n you will have different or for different constants excuse me you will have different m then uh, we can find the number n such that for for all for all small n greater than capital N we have the that the absolute value of x sub n is greater than m. Now now attention please you can compare can compare 
this definition <coughs> is the definition of an unbounded sequence from page 90. You see, where is the difference? Where is the difference? If you have a pen or a pencil and the sheet of paper, let's consider, let's consider a sequence. Let's consider a sequence. One, then comma, one over two, then two, then one over three, then n, one over n plus one, and so on. You see, if and uh, compare this sequence with the sequence one, two, three, so on, n, n plus one. You see where is the difference? Where is the difference? The first sequence is unbound, but it is not an infinity. The second sequence is infinitude, and it is also an unbounded sequence. Why? In this case, if you take the definition from the page number nine. So you see, I take a constant in this definition from page 19. It is denoted by capital K. So I can always, from the first sequence, I can always find, I can always find the term which is greater than capital K. But there is a number of terms which are not greater than this capital K. In contrast, for the second sequence, if I take in this case uh, the constant denoted by M can be denoted by capital K. So if I uh, if I can find the number, number which is which is such that x sub n greater than m, so all the other terms beginning from this capital N will be greater than this. M. So you see, if if somebody asks the question, uh, where is the difference between the unbound sequence and the infinity? So any infinitude is unbounded sequence. But if I take an unbounded sequence. Maybe it is not an infinity. Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. Really, really, because uh, I think that it is an important question. It is a good question for examination. So attention. Yeah, if not, I will repeat. Basic, ba basic can, idea. Huh? You can repeat the basics, basic so, so, idea. So, I will start, uh, if you have, I repeat this case, if you have a pen or a pencil, and can you write, can you write uh, the sequence? One, one yeah. over two, two, one over three, so on, n, one over n plus one, n plus one, one over n plus two, and so on. You see the first sequence. Yeah. And the second sequence. The second sequence is a simple. Simple sequence one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, so on, n, n plus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now, now, I take, I take a constant. You see page number 19. I take a constant. In this case, it is capital K, but no matter. You can uh, denote it by M as in the definition on the, at the page 22. So, for example, for this sequence, I say that for any, for any, for any K from the first definition, for any K greater than strictly greater than zero, strictly positive. For example, I take 22 or 22.5, okay, 22.5. Then I can find, so there exists a number, in this case, 23, 23. And for this number, I have the, the absolute value of the member of my sequence is greater than 22. But the next, you see, the next member of the sequence is 1 over 22. So it is not, it, this member is not greater than 22. It is less than 1. So you see the difference. In the first definition, I say that for any constant, I can find at least yeah. one member, okay? But if I take the second sequence, one, two, three, so on, n, n plus one. If I take my constant 22.5, I will have, that from n equals 23, all the members of my sequence are greater than 22.5. Okay. All the members. You see, in the yeah. first sequence, you will have you will have some terms, some members of your sequence which are not greater than this constant. But you can also you can also find always the members which are greater than this term. You see, you can imagine some other examples in this way. But in the first in the first example, you have that for any constant. You can find, you can find the term which is great. And in the second, in the second example, if you have this constant, so from some term, from some term X, capital N, capital N, all the terms, beginning from this n are greater than this constant. You understand the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, very good. So now, we turn, we turn uh, the page and uh, the page uh, 23. We have, we have, uh, to discuss the so-called uh, monotone sequences. It is a very important, a very important okay, notion in the mathematics uh, in calculus. So we will discuss briefly these notions. So the definition. A sequence A sub N is called increasing if A 
sub n is less than or equals a sub n plus 1 for all n natural. And the sequence is called decreasing if a sub n is greater than or equals a sub n plus 1 for all n. In fact, you see, uh, I want to underline that we have we have to consider the behavior of our sequences really beginning oh, beginning from some n from some n fixed so the finite number of the terms of our sequence it is not very important if our sequence becomes increasing beginning from one number it's very good so we will say that our sequence is is increasing or decreasing uh, in fact it is roughly roughly speaking i can forget i can forget always about the finite number of terms of my sequence. You see, if beginning from one number and for all n beginning from this number, it will be increasing or decreasing, we can say that the sequence is monotone. So, uh, strictly increasing or strictly decreasing, it is uh, the same thing, but we change the symbol. And we write that a n is strictly less than a n plus one, and respectively, respectively, that a n is greater than a n plus one. Is it clear this definition? Yes, these are clear. Clear. Very good. So now. So now we turn the page and uh, we try to consider an exercise. So page 24, page 24. Let us, let us consider the sequence X sub N, which is N plus one divided by to n minus 1. So if you take your calculators, you can, you can find that x1 is 2, x2 is 1, x3 is 4 over 5, and uh, x4 is 5 over 7, and so on. So the first idea, the first idea that my sequence is decreasing. So in the equation number 5.1, I write that x n plus 1 is less than x sub n but i put here the question mark because really really it's the it's the hypothesis nothing else for the moment so now i want to prove this hypothesis so if you turn your page and uh, if we consider, if we consider page number 25, then x sub n, x sub n is, is what? n plus 2.
n plus 2 over 2 n plus 1 it is x sub n plus 1 yes because in the definition of my sequence i take n plus 1 instead of n you see it's clear you are changing the so you see uh, i have x sub n if you want x sub k k x sub k is k plus one over two k minus one so if i take x sub n plus one i have to take k equals n plus one so in the numerator you will have n plus two yes and in yes. the denominator uh -huh. and in the denominator you have 2n plus 1 mm -hmm. why change the sign mm -hmm. ah because why? you see you see your denominator it is 2k minus 1 yes if k is n plus 1 you have in your denominator 2k plus 2 minus 1. Yeah, but it's suppose that is plus 1 is minus stop, 1 stop, and plus stop, stop, 1. Stop, zero. stop, stop. No? stop. You, you see, uh, you have in your, in your denominator 2k minus 1. Yes? yes? I take, I take k equals n plus 1. So, in your denominator, you have 2 multiplied by n plus 1 and then minus 1. So 2 multiplied by n plus 1 is 2n plus 2 and minus 1 you will have, you will have as here, page 25, 2n plus 1. Is it clear? Yeah, it's clear. Clear. Good. So uh, we have the same question mark n plus 2 over 2n two plus 1. Maybe, I don't know, maybe <clears throat> is less than n plus 1 over 2n minus 1. Then from this inequality, from this inequality, multiplying multiplying the fraction on the left hand side by 2n minus 1 and the fraction on the right hand side by 2n plus 1 we obtain uh, the inequality n plus 2 brackets brackets n plus 2 multiplied by 2n minus 1, maybe, I don't know, maybe, less than n plus 1 multiplied by 2n plus 1. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah, yeah. it's very, very simple. So, so, now, we can expand the brackets. You see, on the left hand side if you expand the brackets i hope that it is not very awful for you so you will have 2n square minus n plus 4n minus 2 maybe less than 2n square plus n plus 2n plus 1. so we expand the brackets only nothing else you see then then this inequality leads to the inequality minus two is less than one you can simplify this inequality 
and then you have that minus 2 is less than 1. Is it clear? Yes, yes, it's clear. It, it, it's clear, I hope. Then, then, we see that the inequality minus 2 is less than 1 is very. It's clear. Minus 2 is less than 1, always. Okay? Then, we can conclude that our our inequality 5.1 is also valid. Is it clear the idea of such a proof? Yes. So, yeah, for me it so makes we, sense. But we start with something and we arrive at an inequality which is valid. So Step by step, we can return from this inequality, which is valid, to the inequality from the beginning. Clear? Yes, it's clear. Onya, is clear? Yes. Good. Well. So now let's consider let's consider let's consider an example which is maybe 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 more difficult but you have to deal with with some examples which are not so easy so exercise number 12 we have we have uh, the sequence with the common term x sub n, which is defined as the sum from k equals one to k equals n. The sum, but the sum of what? Here we have a fraction. 1 over k multiplied by k plus 1. So we want, we want, it is not so evident, we want to show that this sequence is bounded and moreover monotonically increasing, monotonically increasing. So the formulation of the problem, I hope it's clear. The formulation of the problem. Okay. So we break our proof in some steps. And you will you will understand why. So the first step, in fact, in fact, the first step is to simplify is to simplify uh, the formula for this x sub n so in order to do this first of all we have some general result some general result so you see step one i have if i denote by capital s sub n the sum of the terms something like f of k where f of k is x over k k plus 1 minus x k. So for the moment we have only the notation, only the notation. I have some, I have a sequence, only this, capital S sub n is the sum 
of the terms like x over k plus 1 minus x k. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes, yes, it's clear. It's clear. Yes. Well, wow. so, so, if, if I take this sum, you see the next line, I take this sum from, from k equals 1 to k equals n. So, the first term will be x sub 2 minus x sub 1. The second term will be x3 minus x2 plus so on plus x sub n plus 1 minus x sub n. So I rewrite, I rewrite my sum. Only this. I rewrite my sum for, for all k from 1 to n. You see? Clear. Is it clear? Yes, it is. I'll yeah. repeat. Yeah. Uh, is necessary to repeat? No? Yeah, the last part. The last part. You see, S4, capital S, sub N. It is defined as the sum of these differences x sub k plus 1 minus x sub k. So, for example, if I take k equals 1, then it will be x2 minus x1. k? Yes, okay. Clear. So if I have k equals 2, you will have x3 minus x2, and so on. So if we simplify, if we simplify this sum, we look for the like terms. For example, in the first bracket, you have x. 2 minus x1. In the second one, you have x3 minus x2. So you will have x2 minus x2, which is 0, and so on and so on. You see? So in this, by this method, by this simplification, you will have that in the case when your S sub n is exactly the sum of this type, you will have that this sum is x sub n plus 1 minus x1. Is it clear? Yes, yes, it's clear. Yeah, no problem. You simplify. You you find the like terms and uh, then uh, x2 minus x2, uh, x3 minus x3. Uh, finally, this gives that s sub n will be x sub n plus 1 minus x1. Very good. So we turn the page. And I write here, I write here, 
that this first step, our general, rather general, result that this S sub n is x sub n plus 1 minus x1. So now, what we are going to do with this general result? We want to apply this general result to our sequence. So, so I recall you that that uh, under the sum of the sum we have the fraction one over k multiplied by k plus one. Okay. So, if you want, the idea is to represent this term like, like the difference of two fractions. So, we claim, it's the formula 5.3, we claim that 1 over k multiplied by k plus 1 is 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1. How to prove this? How to prove this? So, the general method, you have to know this method because we will use this method during all the topics of our calculus. So, we use the method of, of the unknown constants. So the idea I want to represent, I want to represent my fraction 1 over k multiplied by k plus 1 as a difference. Maybe, maybe it is also possible to write as a sum. It is not very important. So here I write, I write that this fraction is some constant a, an unknown constant a over k minus b, capital B, over k plus 1. You see, for the moment, I know that with my common denominator, I will have, I will have from this difference, my initial fraction 1 over k multiplied by k plus 1. So, for the moment, we have, we have to find these unknown constants capital A and B. You see? Stop. Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. For clear. me, yes, at least. And for... Yes, it's clear. Well, clear. Well, so, so. What I have what we have to. So, on the left hand side of this inequality, we have, as in the beginning, 1 over k multiplied by k plus 1. Then, we consider the right hand side of this inequality, and so with the common denominator, we have that it will be k plus 1 multiplied by a minus b multiplied by k divided by k multiplied by k plus 1. I hope it is clear for you. Yeah, it's clear. Clear. Yes. Clear. Then, you see, then. We rearrange the terms 
in order to have that the coefficient for k is a minus b. Yes? Because you have k yeah. plus, yes. It is 3, I hope. And then plus a in the numerator. So, you see, on the left hand side, on the left hand side, we have a fraction, which is 1 over something. On the right hand side, we have in some, <clears throat> in some way the same fraction, but with some unknown constants A and B. So we have to compare two fractions. From this inequality, what can we say? We can say that in the initial fraction, in the numerator of the initial fraction, there is no k. You see, no k. This means that a minus b have to be zero. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, uh, that part is not very clear for me. I'm sorry. So, so you have two fractions. You have two fractions. They, these fractions have to be equal. So, you have to say that the numerator of your fraction is the same. So, the numerators of two fractions have to be equal, yes? And the denominators of two fractions have to be equal, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in this case, you see in this case, you can say that the denominators are really equal. It's the same thing. But, as for the numerators, what do we have? In the initial fraction, you have 1 as the numerator. Yes? And okay. on the right hand side, you have something, something awful. Something like a minus b multiplied by k plus a. So, you can see that in the initial fraction, in the numerator, you have no k. So the coefficient in front of k have to be zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Yes, good. Bon. So, this, the second observation is that if I have a constant in the numerator of the initial fraction, which is 1, so A have to be 1. Yes? Yeah, now it's clear. Now it's clear. Very good. So now, we turn the page and due to our, due to our argument, we have that A minus, we have a system of two, two simple equations with respect to capital A and capital B. So, first of all, a minus b is 0, and a is 1. Mm -hmm. It's clear.
Is yes. it clear? Yes. Yeah, yes, clear. Very clear. So now we can find, we can find without problems that A equals B equals one. So now if you want, if you take the formula, if you take the formula 5.3, then this representation is valid. So if you want, you have that your fraction 1 over k multiplied by k plus 1 is 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1. Then, then you see, it is not difficult. It is not difficult using using step number one. What we what we see from the step number one that s over n is x m plus one minus x one. In this case, you see, you have exactly the same thing. Your x k is one over k. Your x plus x sub k plus one is one over k plus one. So you can find, you can find that that <clears throat> the general, the nth term of your sequence is 1 minus 1 over n plus 1, the formula 5.4. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. Clear. OK. Well, so the first the first observation you see you have your x n as one minus one over m plus one. So I can say that first of all my x over n is strictly positive. Because if I take n equals 1, n equals 2, 3, and so on, 1 minus something which is less than 1 will be always positive. Mm -hmm. Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. clear. The second inequality here. We claim that x sub n is less than 1. But it is also clear because if you take if you take n, 1, 2, 3, and so on, you will have that it is really 1 minus something, which is less than 1, and the difference will be less than 1. I hope it is also clear. Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Good. Well, so now, finally, in our exercise, we have to prove that our sequence is bounding, is bounded, and monotonically increasing. So, the boundedness of this sequence is already proved because. We have we have that x over n 
is greater than zero and less than one. I hope that in this case, it is clear that the sequence is bound. Mm -hmm. If you if you do not like this inequality, you can write that x sub n is greater than minus one. If it is greater than zero, then it is greater than minus one. Agree? Yes, I agree. So in this case, I can write this inequality in the form the absolute value of x sub n is less than one. So another form of of the definition of your boundedness. But it is enough if I say that xn is greater, strictly greater than zero and less than one. Uh, in this case, you have a bounded sequence. Agree? I hope it's clear. Yeah, 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 it's clear. It's quite the same. Ah, Pablo? Clear or not? It's clear. It's a question I do not understand. It's a question. It was on that question. Which one? So the question. No, 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 no question. Very good. So, so the last step, the last step before the break. Uh, so, the second question in the formulation of our exercise was the monotonicity of our sequence. So, I show you if I calculate, if you take your calculators or your telephone, so you can, you can see that x1 is 1 over 2, x2 is 2 over 3, x3 is 3 over 4, and so on and so on. So the hypothesis, the hypothesis here is that our x over m plus 1 is greater than k, k plus 1, excuse me, is greater than xk for any k from, for any nature of k. So I write this inequality with the question mark as in the previous example. You see, so due to my hypothesis, x over k plus 1 is greater than xk. So I write, I write here on the left hand side my term x over k plus 1. It will be 1 minus. 1 over k plus 2. I hope, I hope that it will be greater than 1 minus 1 over k plus 1. For the moment, for the moment, it is only the hypothesis. We hope that it will be like this. Now, simplifying, simplifying this inequality, we find that 1 over k plus 2 is less than 1 over k plus 1. Is it clear? Yes. It's clear. It's clear because you have, you simplify, you simplify the 
inequality and multiplying by minus one, you have to change the sign. You see? Mm -hmm. It's clear or not? Yeah, it's clear. It's clear. Yes. Well, so, so the last inequality, one over k plus two less than one over k plus one is valid. Is valid. That is, this means that the inequality 5.5 is also valid so it is proved it is proved that our sequence our sequence given given at page 26 is bounding and monotonically increasing it was our goal. It was a goal of our exercise. Is it clear? Yeah, it's clear. Yes, it's clear. <coughs> uh, pardon? Clear? Uh, yes, all clear. Well, for all the people. Yeah, for me it's also clear. Yeah. Okay. Well, so now we have a break, 10 minutes, and then we pass to the limits of sequences. I, uh, do you have a lecture on this subject, the limits? Yeah. So maybe you know what this is the limit, but we will discuss this, I think, in some details. Okay? Okay. Okay, so 10 minutes, the break. See you.